the whole time trying to pretend I'm really tuned into that. So one philosophy says, keep it inside. The philosophy says, we'll get out. What do you get out? And they find out we're wrong. you do. 
Find a way or make the way. What is it? Things, getting things that are going to make you happy. Do more plans for ways for the customers? Wait, what? You never thought there was a strategy you got. There's a resource that people believe is missing, but failure comes from all the little things. Activity, not high levels of purpose, and the brain of your fortune. It's your body and your voice. He's an American motivational speaker, personal finance instructor, and self help author. He became well known for his infomercials and self help books. In 2013, Forbes estimated his net worth to be $480 million. He's Tony Robbins, and here are his top 10 goals of success. Ultimately, if you're going to have lasting change in anything, you're not talking about just raising your standards. And I always tell people, if you want to change your life, you can three words, words that sounds, raise your standards. What does that mean? What is it? Raise your standards, I'll make you a new thoughts. I'm not even wasting my time if I change the lead out of you. When I speak about listening shows, I'll take a couple of shows, they just should do, you should follow through on it. I should listen to you, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email. Yeah. You know? I should be in the office earlier, I should be you know, more confident. Whatever your show list is, people love that your show list. You know, it's not like New resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, you know, it's morning, but you kind of know it's not happening. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, and you've got any possible use, I'm going to find a way, I'm going to make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, they make a real revolution inside themselves, which if they raise the standard, they make it a must, they find a way. They find a way. How did you have some area of your life where you raise your standard, your life is never going to say, and you find time in your life, you smoke cigarettes, or you did something, you did it for years, and you kept trying to change it, trying to change it, you kept telling yourself, I should. Then one day something happened. Something just clicked you over, something took you over that kind of tipping point. And inside yourself, you said, no more. It was a very, very different experience, wasn't it? Something inside you shifted. And what was a should became a must, and you never go back. Does that ever happen in your life you can think of? You know, just smoke cigarettes, you ever eat a certain way, drink a certain part of alcohol, and no more, you just don't go back in, notice this? It doesn't really take any more power Because somewhere when we make this claim, we make something now, 100 countries, 4 million people, is human beings absolutely follow through on who they believe they are. If you say, spend today well, I'm going to work hard to stop smoking. But, you know, I'm going to smoke my whole life, I'm, you know, I'm smoking. I know your days are going to be in fact smoking cigarettes again because we all act consistent with who we really are. I tell people the strongest force in the whole human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we find ourselves. You need to find yourself as somebody who is really conservative. You're not going to be crazy and act out unless you're really drunk or something and you can say, oh, but you're really just you want to get permission to yourself. Yeah, all your excuse. If you're a really crazy person, you don't have crazy outrageous people. You don't have conservative because it's not who you are. Third often people say, well, I can't do that. I'm not that kind of person. I always say to people, really, when did you define yourself? I mean, really, how many years ago did you come up with what could and couldn't do in your life? How many years ago? Most people, if they really look at how they're living their life today, it's based on a set of standards, a set of beliefs that they made choices about 10, 20, 30, or more years ago. And very often, we made decisions in our youth or very young about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. There's a reporting metaphor, but it's true. I remember one time I was with my family at the circus, and there's a person there, they have this big, giant elephant, and you look at this elephant, and they take this little rope, put it around the elephant's neck, and they draw the snake in the ground. And I mean, you look at this, you know that elephant can rip down the entire tent with almost no effort, and yet the elephant doesn't struggle, doesn't try. Why is the elephant's conditioned? When it's a little baby elephant and doesn't have the power yet, they put a big rope around it, and they drive this huge snake in the ground, and the elephant fights and fights and fights, and one day, finally, that elephant decides, I'm not capable of pulling this out. And once that becomes the definition of identity of anyone, an elephant in this case, they don't even try anymore. It's just who I am, that's how it is, that's just the way it is in my life. I'd like to ask you to take a look at any place you've got a limitation and ask yourself, when did I decide to accept that limitation? And you may not even see it as a limitation, you might see it as just that's who I am. 
but so often our lives we've adapted to be a certain way so that we don't fail or so that people like us or respect us, but it's not necessarily who we are. Joy comes when you're spontaneous. It's really hard to be truly happy when you're not